As we enjoy an Indonesian breakfast here, a traditional breakfast, um, we're getting ourselves ready to go to the ruins of Baro Buto, which is a series of ruins that are very famous in Indonesia, and they go back a very, very long way in its history. And so we'll be trapping through those areas and taking pictures as we go. So we'll see you soon. Oh, well, I see, okay. Fifteen, okay. No. At you, fifteen, okay, fifteen, Fifty. Okay. Fifteen yeah, I got some stuff already, yes. Put it in the car. Yeah. This one from brown. One of the interesting things when you visit a historic site is you, you everyone is selling various wares and it's kind of fun. Um, Oh, no, thank you, but yeah, I know, it's very, very nice. Yeah, but uh, I have some stuff already. But, uh, you can get a little bit of this, that, and everything else. And so it's kind of fun to bargain with the people that are selling here. So uh, as we travel through here, we'll, we'll see a lot of this, okay? There is an old Asian proverb that goes, so the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. I'm here at Boro Buto. And this temple was built and completed in the 8th century AD and it has 157 steps so you are closer to heaven. And so we begin our journey with this single step as we walk slowly up the hill to the top of the temple. Now, Borobuto uh, was originally built as a temple but also as a tomb uh, completed in the 8th century and as I mentioned before there's 157 steps, large steps, that lead all the way to the very top. And of course, that is where the tomb is located because that's closer to heaven. This structure has been rebuilt several times uh, uh, by the Dutch and also by uh, other people involved in restoring this. The thing that's kind of fascinating about this is that no one's exactly sure how it originally looked. I mean, there are aspects of this that are questionable as to what they are because no one really knew. It's a fascinating piece. It was totally rebuilt in 1975. It was taken off the mountain and a whole new foundation was built for it and was completely rebuilt. So what you see here is a totally refabricated temple rebuilt in 1975. The position of the Buddha is three paling the wheel of flow or the wheel of life. Mm -hmm. And we have one lucky Buddha there, yeah, so you can touch and make with the lucky Buddha. And this open Buddha was on purpose to make photo with the sunrise, because early in the morning mm -hmm. they come here to see the sun rising from the foot of Merapi Fulking from the really beautiful view. So every Buddha is facing Facing out, yeah. Okay. No, right. no, facing to the sunrise, but every Buddha oh, facing, facing out in out. every which direction? Yeah. Okay. Facing out. All right. No Buddha facing. Now, the reason for the triangle is because it's unstable. Uh, yes. You're talking about life is unstable. Yeah, yeah because uh, the first and second level is for the people who still consider Asia, but mm -hmm. when pet and put their fear for the hidden life, so when they are dead. They still have seen, they should reborn again to do something good in much better when fighting fly. Okay. But when they are dead, they already get enlightenment. So no need to reborn again. They can out from the ruling of reincarnation, then stay in the eternal life forever. In and Nirvana. We're on top of the structure here, and we've been talking about uh, a lot of the aspects of it. And up, up here, you'll find is where the, the tomb is for the king. That used to be an area where people could go and worship and, and meditate. Today that's completely sealed off and that's for safety reasons. It's interesting to note that there were attacks even on a structure like this. And in 1985 there was an attempt to blow the structure up. Fortunately that did not happen, but for safety aspects, for security aspects, entrances have to be closed. How often do you get the opportunity to relax, sit down, and have a local beer, which is Bintang, here in uh, Indonesia, and have a temple right behind you? I mean, this is really kind of cool. 
I'm here with my friend Jeffrey, and he's going to tell you all about this place behind me. <laughs> Actually, this temple is called Prambanan. It's supposed to be a Hindu temple, right? And uh, we are here next to, actually, there is a concert, open-air concert theater, which is showing the Ramayana ballet, right, as and now. And uh, it's an open-air, and in case it rains, apparently they have also another stage where they have a roof, right? Mm -hmm. So this is pretty interesting. People come here for dining before they enter the concert, I guess, yeah? Okay, and uh, apparently at night, the uh, Prambanan temple is lighted up, right? So you have a very good view, and over yeah. to you. Yeah? Well, I mean, the neat thing is, I mean, uh, you have uh, entertainment and a temple. And, and, and another thing is, it's very expensive to go visit the temple. <laughs> so it's kind of nice to come over here and just have a look at it and just relax. Yeah, and spend, relax. spend the money if on the gonna, beer. Yeah, if you're going to spend of, money, yeah. I might as well spend it on the beer, right? Yeah, instead of the <laughs> 15 US dollar. Right, right yeah. <laughs> Per person. <laughs> so that's pretty much all I can say at the moment, but yeah. we're having a good time uh, yeah. here. And, yeah. uh, and the cheers. Bintang beer is, how is it? <laughs> it's very good, actually. I, I recommend it. Yeah, okay. Very good. Yeah. This is the local yeah. beer, very famous uh, Indonesian beer. Yeah.